Gators Breakdown. Because there's never a dull moment in Gator Nation. The Gators Breakdown Podcast is ready to go. I'm your host, David Waters. You can find me on social media at GatorDave underscore SEC. Continuing our spring practice coverage right here on Gators Breakdown. This time with the running backs and the wide receivers. Heavy, heavy skill position episode right here on Gators Breakdown. So hit that like button. Subscribe right here on YouTube, your favorite podcast platform. However you are enjoying Gators Breakdown, just click that like button if it's on YouTube. Subscribe. It really, really helps us out. Get those notifications when there's a new episode of Gators Breakdown. Leave some comments. Your support doing those things really help Gators Breakdown grow. Hey, if you want to support even more, really, really helps, of course. You can join Gators Breakdown Plus. You get those extra episodes, access to the Discord chat. If you want to chat with some other Gator fans, ad-free episodes, all that good stuff. Link is in the description to join Gators Breakdown Plus. And everybody, don't forget the orange and blue game next weekend, April 13th, brought to you by Florida Victorious. Part of that, if you become a member or already a member of Florida Victorious, you get a member benefit. And that big member benefit this time is, of course, an autograph signing hosted by Florida Victorious with head coach Billy Napier and players of the team following the orange and blue game. Non-members can also get in access $30. All you got to do, go to the game. Come be a member of Florida Victorious. You can meet and greet your favorite players after the game. Get their autographs, take some pictures, all that good stuff. Now's a great time to join Florida Victorious. If you sign up now for the $25 a month level, you also get access to their message board. Gaines Vegas has been posting some insider practice notes throughout spring practice, so it's a no-brainer. You help support the players, get access to players. I mean, through Florida Victorious, we've had Graham Merch, we've had Trayon Webb, we've had Trey Wilson, Noah Portyagin. I mean, really good, really good interviews the last few months. Big thanks to Florida Victorious. All that's happening because of you members out there. Look, if you can do it, if you can spare some change, NIL is the future. We know it. Plays such a pivotal role. A lot of signups lately. And I mean a lot of signups lately at Florida Victorious. I know everybody's excited to go meet their players and, and, and Billy Napier. Become a part. Use promo code GatorsBD, all that access, and you get 20% off your first month as well. Link is in the description to join Florida Victorious. All right, so let's get to it. We're going to start with the running backs. Montreal Johnson returns, and then a bunch of young guys behind him. Let's hear from running back coach Jabbar Jaluk. I'm very pleased with our room is right now. I think the young guys that we brought in, I think that they're very talented. Um, I think they're eager to learn. And I think they're coming in at a great time because of Montreal and Trey Webb. Um, they're giving them some guidance and being very strong leaders and putting them in a position to be the most successful that they can be. So I'm excited about where they're going. They have a long way to go. Um, but I think the direction that they're headed in is very positive. Trayon shows some things as a number three back. What kind of opportunity is this for him to be kind of the number two now behind Montreal? It's going to be a great opportunity for him. I think he's um, very excited about the opportunity that he has. Um, Trayon is very tough. He's physical. He's smart. I'm talking about extremely smart. He's a 4.3 grade point average. He's going to graduate two and a half years from college. Um, so that helps him to play a lot faster than you would think that a young player would play. So I'm excited about what he's going to do, and he's ready for the opportunity. And um, he's been... Um, for a lack of a cliche as word, he's been born for this because he's a he's a true and true Gator. So he's been looking for his opportunity to play in the swamp and have an opportunity to to uh, excel in front of his family and friends and uh, in the Gator Nation. So I'm excited for what he's going to do. On Tran, is, do you feel like his contributions last year maybe went a little bit under the radar? I think he led you guys in yards per carry, but just as the third back, is that maybe something that didn't get appreciated out of last season? I appreciate it. Right. I don't know how much uh, you guys as a media gave him the credit for doing that. Um, you know, Treyarch is very um, detail-oriented, right? Um, he, he, understand, he understood his role, and he embraced it, right? He was excited about the times that he did get in. He wanted to be productive when he got in because it means something to him. So um, I think that that helped him with his confidence, and now the game is slowing down for him a little bit. So I'm, I'm, I'm excited to see what he's going to do. Where, where has he developed most year to year? F from year one and year two, I just would think that the understanding of the – the speed of the game in college compared to high school. And when I say things are slowing down, I mean that he understands what others are doing now. He's not just a runner, 
right? So he has to know exactly what's taking place and how things are uh, unfolding as they go. And, and, and last year it was all over the place. Now he has better eye discipline, and he's able to go out there and play at a fast pace. Montrell's run for 2,500 yards, something like that, in, in three years of college football. What is he, you know, a lot of people still doubt him. And what is it about him that, that you see that you expect him to have a really big year this year? You said if you would doubt him? I said there's a lot of people out there that doubt wow. him. Yeah. And you just say he had 2,500 yards in college? Yeah. Um, I don't know, man. I, I think that's pretty, uh, pretty salty, you know, for a young man to be able to play um, three years of college football and have the production he have as a part-time rush lead runner, right? He split the backfield for three years. Just think if he was getting more carries, what he'd do. So um, I'm excited about what he's going to be able to do as a leader. Um, Montreal is the ultimate pro. Right. He, um, he works hard. He practices the right way. He's being a leader. He's being a mentor. He's giving a young man um, a great example of what it's supposed to look like. Um, and we don't worry about what's going on outside, man. I just think that he's going to continue to grow and continue to be the um, consistent player that he's been his entire career. Um, I think Montreal might have two fumbles in his entire career, one at UL and one here. That was the first game of the season against uh, Utah when he first got to the Swamp. Um, other than that, he takes care of the football. He's good in pass protection. He catches the ball out of the backfield. He's six foot, 215 pounds. He's a physical runner in between the tackles. And he's a lot faster than you would think he is. So um, I'm excited about what he's going to be able to do on the football field. Um, same as what he's been doing his entire career. Uh, not long after that, Jabbar Jaluk got pretty emotional uh, when, and choked up a little later in that press conference when, discuss, when discussing Montreal Johnson. And, quote, Montreal Johnson is the guy you want to date your daughter, Jaluk said. He's going to be respectful. He's going to be kind. He's going to be a protector. He's going to be a provider. It means something to him. Football means something to him. Where he comes from, Montreal has a story that's going to be told for a long time. We've been together four years now. Montreal Johnson is a very unique person. I mean, look, this is a running back, Montreal. I mean, just over 1,100 snaps uh, in, in his collegiate career. You just heard 2,500 yards, um, hardly fumbles, hardly turns the ball over. Um, look, the experience he brings to the unit doesn't fly under the radar, of course. If Jabbar Jaluk says it's very important on how critical it was to get Montreal Johnson back. And look, I mean, he could have tested the NFL waters. He could have transferred somewhere else. We know how to – Crazy the transfer portal is, uh, but he's back at, at Florida for his fourth season. Julio goes on to say he's experienced. You can't underestimate experience playing football. You can't underestimate the knowledge that he has in this offense. You can't underestimate the value of him being able to catch the ball out of the backfield and play on third down in pass protection or run in between the tackles or all outside. He's just a complete back. He's the total package, and now he's being a mentor. He's being a leader. Jalut later added, he's sitting next to Jaden Ball, making sure that they understand what needs to happen, talking about the young running backs. Um, he's to the left and to the right is Kanan Daniels. They sit right there next to him. And when I say write something down, he's making sure they're writing it down the correct way, sharing his notes with them, teaching them how to take notes, how to be prepared, how to be the first one in the training room, how to take care of your body to prevent injuries. He's the ultimate player, man. And I think he's going to leave here as one of the best backs to play at the University of Florida when it's all said and done. I do ask you guys if you want to go to, I think, FloridaGators.com, go to the football section, check out this press conference with Jabbar Jaluk. I mean, you can tell just how much Montreal Johnson means to him as a person. I mean, not, even, not, not a football player. Just a person. Like I said, he got choked up when talking about Montreal Johnson and what he means to him and kind of the path from Louisiana to Florida and you know following this staff to Florida. There was a lot of trust there. Uh, being from Louisiana, playing at Louisiana, having a good first season, then your coach goes leaves. And there's a lot of trust for Montreal Johnson to leave Louisiana. It didn't go to Florida. Jabbar Luke is a huge, huge part of that. Before we move on from Montreal Johnson, let's hear from the player himself. What went into your decision um, to return back to Florida uh, for your fourth season? Oh, uh, I kind of, well, I ain't gonna say I kind of, me, me, the coaches, the fans, we all, we all agreed on that, you know, I ain't played well enough last year. Let's just be real. Uh, so I wanted to come back, you know what I'm saying, prove myself. And yeah, that, that's, all, that's all it was. What do you want to prove? What's most important to you to, to 
proof. That I could do it all. I could, I could, you know, be that all-purpose back, that that back that that Florida has been missing, that that thousand-yard back. Is that your goal? Yes, sir. This year? Yes, sir. Where, was there an area in particular where you feel like you didn't match your expectations? Was it an all-around thing? Like what? What, what made you feel that way? Last year, it was it was a lot of mental stuff that went into plays. Like like I said, like last year, I learned like a lot of mental stuff. It was like I was overthinking last year. Like I was thinking a lot, playing slow, and like midway through the season, I kind of seen that and I, I kind of fixed it. You know what I mean? And I, I got better with that throughout the season. Was that a influencing thing, or is it just like? Now it was just that me knowing that I was draft eligible. I was trying to do the most and not do my job and just yeah. Made a number change this year from two to one. Go into that, and what is that? You know, number one's a bit of a legendary number mm-hmm. around here. What does that mean to you? Uh, like you said, number one is a legendary number here. Uh, I'm, honor, I'm, I'm honored to wear it. Uh, I just want to just go and you know be a part of history. Uh, what went to my decision? Just uh, coach asked me to change, and I was like, I guess you know I want to be a part of history. And what way to do it, and then make that that, that number change. Yeah. Yeah. Percy Ward, number one. Mm-hmm. Have you looked at his film? Everyone did. <laughs> yeah, of course I did. When I first touched down here. Do you have an inner Percy that you want to channel? A little bit, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna be I'm gonna be returning punts this year too. Are you really? Yes, yeah, sir. What about the two freshmen? You know, Jaden's looked huge out there like mm-hmm. a mountain and, and Katie looks pretty good as well. What have you seen from them? Man, those those guys they they're not freshmen. Uh for real, like, I feel like they they already been here before. They 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 they're like a sponge. Everything I tell them, they they take it and run with it. Uh, they they look up to me to you know to learn from, and I've been that guy that that they look up to. Yeah. And your relationship with Trayon, I mean, he was kind of behind you and Trevor last year. You spoke about that, but you know they talked about you and Trayon and Cam Carroll as well, kind of being the leaders for those two guys. What is your relationship with Cam and Trayon? Uh, my relationship with Cam, I, we we almost do everything together, like off the field. Uh, we go out to eat together, you know, play the game, go bowling. We almost do everything. Uh, it's just, it's just that family that, that I talked about with, with Coach Jalou. It's just that family, and I feel like once everyone gets on the same level that the running back room is on, the sky's the limit. I think we saw last year Montreal Johnson do some of the things that were, were kind of uncharacteristic of him. And as he said, the NFL was in his mind. He was draft eligible. He wanted to do too much, and that held him back. Trying to do too much actually hurt. Him. Montreal Johnson. So now I think the mindset's much better. Look, we had him on uh, Gators Breakdown around that time, mid-season. I think it was either after the South Carolina game, or I think it might have been after the Georgia game, but right there in that mid-season mark anyway, knowing that he had to play better. There was that bye week in there uh, as well, but I mean, nice to hear him admit, you know, the the big issue was I tried to do too much. Uh, So this year, hopefully, you you think he'd be in a better mindset, knowing uh, what the issue was last year and do the things that you know you can do, things that you need to be able to do, uh, and you know, do the things you do well because <laughs> that, that's a pretty good running back in and of itself. Uh, it's it fun, kind of funny with the number change. I know Billy Napier's not really big on the uh, number one um, and what it holds, to, at least to a lot of the fan base. Uh, Billy Napier doesn't really think about it that way, uh, at least what I was told last year uh, <laughs> in dealing with that. Um, but it is kind of funny where Montreal Johnson admits, yeah, coach asked me to change. Kind of funny uh, because we know the new number two on the team is five-star held at quarterback DJ Lagway. <laughs> so uh, Montreal Johnson was number two. But look, that open, that open, number one was open. Ricky Pearsall leaves. Um, so it was open uh, I- anyway. So uh, just kind of the way, fun, funny the way it works out because I know from what I've been told, um, very close that Billy Napier doesn't really hold that number one in regard. Like, I mean, look, it's a player thing. Um, so Billy Napier just trusts the players with it. Uh, so if you want number one, you can have number one. It's not like he's holding it for anybody special, but I, I think lately it's just been a player thing. The players take care of that number one. Uh, and Ricky Pearsall certainly lived up to it last year. You know, Princely got it last year. I know very polarizing. <laughs> Brenton Cox before that, very polarizing. Uh, Ricky Pearsall. Uh, about the only one lately who's really lived up to every aspect of what we expected at number one. I don't really care. I'm not that big number one. It doesn't really do much for me. It, uh, just go play. I don't care what number you wear. Uh, but but uh, and, and the little interesting note there at Montreal Johnson saying he's doing a little bit of punt return. Now, I don't know if that means he's starting. I wouldn't think so. Um, Billy Napier may want a lot of – if he is, if he is starting, it probably is an aspect of trust that goes there. I don't, <clears throat> I don't know much about that. Going to probably ask around and see. 
um, how how much or you know if it's really been decided who the number one uh, punt returner is. So you know we'll see, uh, but it, it is interesting that Montreal Johnson puts it out there uh, that he is uh, part of the punt return team uh, right now. I think was, I think he's done some kickoff anyway, if I remember right, the, the, the last few years. So nothing too new um, with, with that, but. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see where that goes. But, of course, for me and Montreal Johnson, a lot of you out there, the ultimate question is just how much better can he be? He's a really solid back, and it's probably more about just being consistent. You know, a few too many easy tackles, even though he was still one of the SEC's best in yards after the contact last year. But, look, there were a few chances to break some bigger runs, some longer runs that, you know, maybe he didn't – the vision wasn't there. Maybe he didn't see the right way more consistent catching the ball, becoming an even better blocker. Uh, Those are things, of course, the next level is looking at. So, you know, the last couple of seasons, he's had near identical stats uh, to Trevor Etienne in many categories, but I can see where it's not as close. But between him and Webb and, you know, why not a workhorse, Johnson will be a clear uh, number one. You heard uh, Jabari Luke saying that, yeah, he's he's been splitting carries, but those are the stats he's had anyway. Imagine if he didn't have to split. Uh, so many carries. So look, we'll we'll see. Does it change this year? Because look, there was only one year separating Montreal Johnson and Trevor Etienne, but now there's a couple years separating Montreal Johnson and Trayon Webb, uh, and of course those freshman running backs as well. So you know, not to take anything away from Trayon Webb, he he'll be a big contributor. Only carried the ball 26 times last year. He'll certainly have a larger role with Etienne leaving, uh, but there is more of a gap now between the players at the running back spot. Uh, Webb having a really good spring uh, should definitely be a plus uh, catching the ball at the backfield as well for what he brings to the table. But you know, Montreal Johnson leading the way, number one um, r- running back. I'm interested. I mean, I'm interested in seeing. I mean, maybe maybe maybe, you know, maybe Webb goes out there and improves enough to where okay, no, I should be getting the same amount of carries Trey on, uh, Trevor Etienne was getting last year. Maybe the stats are identical between Johnson and Webb. Much like they were between Johnson and ETN the last couple of years, so that that's going to be an interesting storyline. He won't be a workhorse. Well, one more time, I'll get into that. Even though he may lead the team in carries, and it may not be as close as it was between Johnson and ETN coming up, I don't think that means Montreal is going to start getting, you know, twenty carries game in and game out, twenty five carries. I don't see that happening either way. So. We'll see. He won't be a workhorse, but he'll be the guy in the running back room. Jalute did go on to say uh, about the freshman backs that he sees their heads are spinning. Uh, They have a lot going on in their heads as they take their first reps. He says it's important for him to adapt to them uh, and make it where they can understand what he's asking them to do. He doesn't want to, quote, talk over their head and basically wants to speak the same language. Simplify the process so they can be efficient. So, you know, what we should... I think we should be confident that this running back group, these guys can contribute if need be. Uh, those freshmen, you know, good track record of developing freshman backs that have an impact. Uh, Montreal Johnson, his freshman season at Louisiana. ETN, his freshman season, of course, here at Florida. You know, Webb was a good third back last year in the limited times that we saw him. Uh, I think you have to feel confident when one of those true freshmen are on the field. If they're out there, I mean, go back to ETN and, Florida's playing Utah in the swamp, and it's like, okay, you know, Lorenzo Lingard's on the on the depth chart, or I mean, or not, wasn't on the depth chart that week leading up to Utah. What's going on here? Um, Trevor Etienne's there. Well, season played out, and in the very first game of Trevor Etienne's career, he's out there making plays versus Utah. So if we see the similar scenario with one of these freshman backs, I think there should be a lot of confidence out there that those guys went and earned it. And those guys are going to be some pretty good players if they're out there on that field at the running back spot. So it, it, it's, it's a strong spot. You know, Florida had some offensive line issues last year. We know that you lose Osiris Torrance, one of the best run blocking offensive linemen in college football. We saw what he did in the NFL this past year as well. It was going to be a a hit on this offensive line. The running backs had a little bit of effect on. With, it got affected a bit with Osiris Torrance in the NFL. I still think this group is pretty good. I'm a big fan of Montreal Johnson. Eager to see, hopefully with an improved offensive line, they take that they take that step we expect them to take. Uh, specifically for Kanan Daniels, uh, Jabari Jaluk says it's a change in running styles, of course, from him because it is different. When you're a wildcat style quarterback, 
to now a running back where the nuances are different. Jaluk says it's different being a Wildcat quarterback and just running. Daniels now has to understand the nuances, much more of how things work when taking handoffs as a running back. It's a big change there. Overall, Jaluk said something that continues from what we've heard uh, from him and his approach. I want my boys to compete, but we're not in competition. His group cheers for each other, help the team when the ball's in their hand, but also when the ball's not in their hand. Uh, so, you know, on the field, once again, my biggest question, where do the explosive runs come from? Where is the explosion? That's what we're going to miss the most out of Trevor Etienne until we see it from somebody else. It's my biggest worry in replacing him. He was a home run threat. I think some of those runs will still be there, but how consistent? We know the floor of Montreal Johnson. How, how, how much better uh, can, can he be? Are there more explosives in his arsenal? Webb, Ball, Daniels, but you're both the freshman running backs were, they were big play waiting to happen in high school. They don't have elite speed, but they play fast, show great vision. If you're one of those guys, show that mark as a true freshman. Can it translate? ETN wasn't really a blazer either, but the vision, playing fast, produced big plays. Someone else is just going to have to replicate that. So, of course, don't want to leave him out, but it's not really going through a whole lot in spring. The fifth running back in this group, I'm not going to say fifth on the depth chart, and then saying the way it is right now in spring, he is because he's very limited. And, of course, that's redshirt senior Cam Carroll, two-leg transfer, that gruesome knee injury last fall in preseason camp. Hasn't been clear to practice with the team yet. Luke's looking forward to getting Carroll back in the fold, but there isn't a clear timetable for when that might be. Luke goes on to say, quote, he's doing really well. He's progressing. He might be a little ahead, but I'm not 100% on that. But he has a long road to go, but he's doing well. He's got good spirits. He's been a leader also with the young guys, helping them out as best he can right now. He can get a little frustrated, so I'm trying to be as positive as I can with him and make sure that his mental capacity is still there. His psychic, once he does have the opportunity to get back out there and be able to perform at a high level. So there we go. Kind of going through the running back room right there with Jabbar Jaluk, Montreal Johnson. Eager to see how that group just plays out. I, I, I really am. I think just, um, you know what you're getting in Montreal Johnson, so there's that. Really intriguing storylines. What happened behind? But behind him, how, how how much do the freshmen push for snaps? I think Trayon Webb's comfortably going to be the second back. Does that change the season? What's his ceiling? I mean, I think there's just a I think there's a lot of questions in a good way. Questions don't necessarily have to equate to bad. It's just wait and see mode for that group of very high floor. Very high floor. I think, you know, as we've been going through spring practice, floor and ceiling have been kind of the way I've been looking at these groups. Very high floor. I think a very high ceiling with this group as well. And those freshman backs, I'm telling you, they're getting a lot of positive reviews so far through spring practice. All right, let's go to the other skill position group on offense, and that is wide receiver. We're Billy Gonzalez, the coach of the wide receivers, say, quote, the room is wide open. He says he can move the veterans around in the room, have them play different wide receiver spots, but likes the young guys to concentrate on one spot until experience catches up. Says the offense is built to move different guys into different wide receiver spots. Gonzalez also really hits home the importance of having quarterback Graham Mertz back, just how much that helps the wide receiver room comes back and look, of course, he has a rapport with Trey Wilson from last year, Khalil Jackson, Marcus Burke, Quevion Frazier's, and on a smaller scale, Andy Jean, Aiden Mizell. But of course, that familiarity with Wisconsin transfer, Team Ray DK. Played together a couple years at Wisconsin, had a pretty good relationship there, pretty good season together to Graham Mertz and DK. Their experience together will pay off, is it allowed them to hit the ground running, so God, Gonzalez said every wide receiver is different. You know, so having relationship, having that continuity and going rep after rep, rep over time with so many of these wide receivers is paying dividends. There is a rhythm there with Graham Mertz and T. Ray DK, Trey Wilson, Khalil Jackson. That's the benefit of having a returning quarterback. So now let's hear from Billy Gonzalez on the rest of the wide receiver room. And, of course, Trey Wilson. 
First and foremost, I think there's been great competition uh, throughout uh, the first two weeks of practice with these guys competing. Um, one, of the, one of the things we talk about or on a regular basis is uh, I, I tell the players every day, I, you know, I always tell them, every rep you take your resume. So everything that you, every time you take a rep, every time you're on the football field, that's your stamp, that's who you are. Uh, and, it, and it creates an environment where these guys are competing, but at the same time learning to get better. Uh, I, love, I love their attitude. I absolutely love their attitude. Uh, they've made some big plays, but we got to continue to be consistent. Uh, you know, today there was a, a, a younger a player that um, kind of had a missed assignment and then had a chance to come right back and make another play right afterwards. But that's what you want to do. And I told all of them that this is practice. This is a learning environment. You know, when we get to the season, you know, that's, that's where you're playing. You can't afford to do that. But um, it's live and learn right now. But I do, uh, obviously, Ricky's a special football player. Uh, I think he was a, not a good football player. He's a great football player. He's going to have a great career. Um, I love him to death. He, he's phenomenal. But I'm super excited about the, the young guys that are learning learning, they're eager, they're hungry. Uh, and then you added a couple, you know, you added a, a, a transfer in with Jim who's um, got a lot of leadership, um, a veteran player that's been there, done that. It's got a lot of, a lot of football knowledge uh, and he's got a lot of reps in him. So super excited about the competition part within the, uh, within the unit. Can you just see from Eugene Wilson as a freshman and then what do you want to see from him going into his second year? Explosive, uh, super explosive, super talented, um, an elite football player that came in and had all the intangibles as far as just athletic ability, um, made plays, um, big plays for us. Uh, and kind of what he's transitioned to right now, and we had a conversation going into practice, into meetings at the before when we started through what we call our identity period, moving into spring ball was the details. Um, and being able to finish uh, like a big time, uh, like a big time player, he always wants. He's he's very inquisitive. He always asks about some of the great players. He, he, he coach, tell me about some of the great players you coach. What have what have made them different than the other players? And you know, bottom line is the players that have been you know, the the great ones. They come in and they're hungry from the minute that they get here. They don't wait till they're a senior to try to be great when they're okay. I got to finish strong now. They come in hungry. Um, and if you watch, uh, I don't know if you guys how much practice you got to watch out there, but uh, you know we talk about finishing. And I and I, I gave them a couple examples of former players that when they touched the ball, it was different. They were gone. And uh, I love that Eugene's kind of doing the same thing. He's he's catching that ball and it's it's out the gate. Um, he's tough. He's finishing. He's he's becoming a really good blocker. I'm fired up. Listen, I can't say enough great things about uh, Eugene right now. And you know, anytime you're a great player, that leadership aspect comes to play where you become a vulnerable, a vocal player. You know, as a freshman, you go out there and you make plays, but is it really my time to step up and be that vocal leader? You know, with with within the program right now, listen, you you step up and you make you've done made the plays. So let's go be the leader uh, vocally as well, too. And he's really embraced that part. Man, Billy Gonzalez. Hyped up about Trey Wilson. I mean, that's probably one of the Billy is also kind of that way anyway. You know, getting to know him throughout the years, but he's got he's got some a little bit of mojo behind him about Trey Wilson. And you can hear just how fast he's talking. He sounds like me a little bit. <laughs> so how fast he's talking and just all the praise of Trey Wilson there. Look, one more time, Trey Wilson, thanks to Florida Victorious, was on Gators Breakdown last week. And you heard Trey talk about and he calls him Eugene. Look, I asked Trey about that. I'll call him Trey. Does he like to be called Eugene Wilson or Trey Wilson? Eugene or Trey? He said he doesn't care. Uh, so uh, I'll, I'll stick with Trey because I know most people call him that. Uh, but you just heard Billy Co Billy Gonzalez's coach call him Eugene. So it's all fine. Uh, but Eugene or Trey, whatever you want to call him, says he doesn't care. Uh, but we heard what he wanted to get better at. And that's the same message from Gonzalez. You know, Wilson mentioned getting tripped up for easier tackles and wanting to get more yards after the catch. You know, finish the play on an even higher note, and to do that, got to put some weight on. He wants to be better at winning at the top of routes, uh, and then the intangibles. You know, he is still young, so he admits he has a lot to take in, but he has that experience to also now to be able to lead. So go back, listen to that episode if you miss it. If you want to continue some wide receiver, you know, a lot of people have already listened. Thanks to everybody who sent feedback that how much they enjoyed the interview. But if you haven't checked it out yet. Uh, go to Gators Breakdown after this episode. Last week, there was an interview there with Gators wide receiver Trey Wilson. All right, let's hear from another 
wide receiver this spring practice, and that will be one Khalil Jackson. As far as mentality, uh, nothing really changes because I'm still, you know, trying to get towards my goals and and uh, reach my aspirations. And, uh, you know, it's just a, a hungry mindset. I got to go out there each and every day and, and fight for what I want because at the end of the day, I'm, I'm not where I want to be. Does it take some of the pressure off? Um, yeah, it definitely takes a, a lot of the pressure off. Um, but like I said, I still, you know, put more pressure on myself to, to be better than what I am and, and, and reach those goals. Um, I think the, the biggest thing for me, um, one, is is playing to my size, uh, you know, playing big, 6'3", 215. So I, I need to play like that consistently. And then another thing is, is just blocking on the perimeter uh, consistently. Did you feel like you guys did a pretty good job with blocking on the perimeter as a unit last year? Like what? Well, what motivates that goal for you? Um, well, we got this saying, well, first of all, I think we did a, a okay job. You know, it could have been a lot better, but uh, Billy G has a saying, if you don't block, you don't get the rock. So I think that's, that's something that we all took into account and tried to, you know, put forth better efforts blocking. What is it like being the legacy that you, that you have? Um, it, it's, it's awesome uh, being able to continue that legacy everywhere I go to fans or Oh, is that that's, you know Willie's son, Willie's grandson, uh, and they just you know give me that acknowledgement, and it's great to be able to follow in their footsteps. Is there pressure involved in that? Nah, no pressure. There we go, Khalil Jackson, of course, Legacy Gator. And to go back to the beginning of that, he was asked about you know him getting that scholarship last year. He was a walk on, played quarterback in high school, of course, so not a lot of experience playing wide receiver till he gets to Florida. Walked on, earned that scholarship last year. Uh, so it is a growth process still for Khalil Jackson. And we saw some highlights last year, uh, but now it's, of course, taking that next step. On Khalil, Jack, Khalil Jackson, Gonzalez expressed, quote, he's very super smart football player, really smart, big, strong, and he's faster than what people think. He can run. He can really run. He goes on to mention that some of the biggest catches last year, of course, came from Jackson. Uh, and for me, with Jackson is, can he develop more where he's a more consistent wide receiver? Of course, there are those highlight catches he made last year, but we need to see more of those routine catches you know, to, to go along with that. Only 21 catches last year. There were five games where he only had one catch. The LSU game, he had no catches. So you know, if he's going to be one of the top three wide receivers in this group to go along with Wilson and Chimre DK, then more production is needed uh, for, 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 for Jackson. So it's uh he even admit, he he admitted too he's got to play to his size now, that's where he wants to uh, improve a bit and that, that's true I mean his size contributed to some of those big time catches last year but you know now it's about getting open now using that size to get open beat man coverage use that physical stature that you have to get open on a more consistent basis to make the more routine plays if it's third and four okay you need to be more of an option to get that first down. You know, don't get me wrong. Let's add to those highlight plays. Those big, there were some big catches last year. You know, Florida doesn't Florida doesn't win the South Carolina game last year without a catch from Khalil Jackson. Now I just got to build on that. And look, as I said, he's a young, young he's a young receiver, still quote you know somewhat younger player overall, but even younger at receiver. We just have to have a lot of experience. Hopefully, there is another step for Khalil Jackson. Marcus Burke. Is someone else Billy Gonzalez likes really raved uh, about him in the, in this press conference? Billy Gonzalez says he likes to move Burke around and says he's really come on the last few practices. He has played in the 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 X, the H, the Z spots uh, at, at the receiver spot. You know the H being that hybrid there, but um, lining it up in three spots. And Gonzalez said that even all three in the same practice. You know, so he's had. A good scrimmage last week with some downfield catches, and you know to extend that. Remember, DK and Burke. Now knowing that Burke, I and mean, we saw some in the highlights Florida shared as well. Uh, but I did let you guys know in the review of the first scrimmage that DK was also catching some balls down the field. So DK and Burke with some big downfield catches in the scrimmage. For Burke, you know you hope this is the turning point. He was starting to show a bit le- a bit last season. Had that breakout spring game last year, but never had that breakout performance in the regular season. Something we were just really waiting on from him, and we never got it. So Gonzalez made sure to point out how far he has come, and it's time to see it. 
this season. And of course, the freshman wide receivers, Tank Hawkins, TJ Abrams, um, you know, for Gonzalez, first thing he mentioned was their speed. And we know that. There's no big surprise there. Uh, but they go on to say, quote, but here's the biggest thing. Just like anything else is when you get on the football field and you start going, the more you put in the first couple of days, boom, vroom, 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 looking fast. And then once you start putting in a lot in as a freshman, you got to start questions lining up. Where am I lining up? The slow down to the process starts taking hold of them a bit the more they get thrown at them. So it's just a matter of making sure you let them step back a little bit, reprocess, put them back in so they can play fast again. But they're both fast. They both care a ton about it. So not fair on those guys to say, hey, can, those, can one of those guys be Trey Wilson? Can one of those guys be Eugene Wilson this year? Eugene Wilson was special in what we got. You know, we saw a progress from Trey Wilson of being a gadget player, a athlete, to as the season progressed, more of a true wide receiver. Smarting about midseason. We started seeing that pro- progression midway. We all remember the first drive of the Georgia game. And it kind of seemed like there was the, as the games went on last year, Trey Wilson, we see him at a lot of the beginning game, beginning of the game, the scripted plays, and then it would take till fourth quarter to really see him again. You know, hopefully, you know, with him, the staff, they identified the being able to get him the ball more. He got the ball a lot, but beginning of games, later in games. But I don't know if we should ask ourselves, hey, can one of these guys duplicate that? Probably not. And that takes away from what Trey Wilson did last year. But at the same time, with that speed, being in spring, being an early enrollee, there's plenty of time to prove they can be on the field. And then, of course, names that really come up a whole lot, but not much on them so far are the second-year receivers, Aiden Mizell, Andy Jean. Gene has been limited most of the spring so far while he handles a hamstring injury. So you know, any step that we were waiting so much for him to take this spring has kind of just been limited. By, by a hamstring injury. Aiden Mizell, he's put on some pounds, up to 182 pounds, still has that blazing speed. I have to think one of those guys contribute a lot more uh, at some point this season. Mizell probably a leg up there with being able to go to spring right now, but just not hearing as much. And that's not a, necessarily a bad thing. Gene, it's understandable because of the injury. Uh, Mizell, I haven't heard a ton, uh, but you know, still a little bit of spring to go. And we're not going to hear everything. We're not going to see everything. But certainly, just not hearing as much as I am about the other receivers in the group with those guys. So there we go. Getting you caught up on running back, getting you caught up at wide receiver, the skill player, skill player positions. Uh, wide receiver, you know, you know what you're getting in Trey Wilson. Team Ray DK to a point. You know, how much better can he be? I mean, Graham Merch took a jump in this offense. Why can't Team Ray DK as a receiver take some kind of a jump? He got kind of passed over last year with the coaching change at Wisconsin. They went to a different style of offense, didn't really fit him. He comes to Florida. We saw how well it fit Graham Mertz, and we're waiting for a you know another step for him. Can Team Ray DK make that same one-year transition uh, to be a much better player in this offense compared to what it was in Wisconsin? There was something good there a couple years ago. As a go-to target for Graham Mertz, maybe it pays dividends this year. But good look at the skill position players here. Running back, wide receiver, tons of questions, tons of potential, tons of young player, young players that can really, really uh, make a difference when we get them in the game light situations this fall. Florida's going to need that. Florida's going to need some young skill players to step up if they are to overcome expectations. A lot of options here we just went over in this episode. We'll see if any of them come up to the challenge. All right, that'll do it for this episode of Gators Breakdown. I am your host, David Waters. You can find me on social media at GatorDave underscore SEC. Guys and girls out there, thank you for listening to this episode of Gators Breakdown.